It's Tuesday, September 23rd, and here's what you need to know. We're watching three systems in the Atlantic, Gabrielle, and we're also watching this area of thunderstorms and another one which is looking really impressive over the last couple of hours. The National Hurricane Center is watching all three of these. We'll talk about it in detail. It's snowing in Colorado today. That system moves east and it's going to bring a lot of severe weather to parts of the plains and even further east over the coming days. Today there's a risk for tornadoes, some really large hail, and tomorrow again that moves further to the east and even further to the east as we head toward Thursday. Plus we're starting to see a really stormy period across parts of the North Pacific. We'll talk about those impacts. Hope you're doing well on this official full day of fall. We began fall officially yesterday, but it's feeling quite summer-like for some of you. And not just that, we're also dealing with severe weather today across a good part of the central U.S., and that moves east. Here's what we're looking at now. This storm system that's moving through the Rockies is plowing to the east. We've got quite a bit of showers, too, across parts of the Ohio Valley into the northeast. That will bring some severe weather today. Well, let's start with the tropics, and then we're going to jump to that severe weather risk. Again, Gabrielle still way out to sea, moving away from land, but this system needs to be watched over the next couple of days. Some of the guidance brings it very close to the southeast coast. I think this one back here moves a little bit further to the east. The National Hurricane Center watching both of these areas. This one has a really good chance of development now, about an 80% chance. This one is in a less favorable area, a bit of wind shear. Some of the environmental conditions aren't as good, but as it approaches the southeast coast, this is something we have to keep an eye on. Regardless of development or where it goes, it's going to bring some heavy rain into the Bahamas. And I think you got to watch it again as it gets very close to the southeast coast. This is the European ensemble guidance from overnight. New data coming in today. A lot of the members not really developing this into a really strong storm hurricane. In my book, you've got to watch this. And a couple of the members bring this thing ashore. It could bring some heavy rain to the region at the very least. And then you're dealing with your second storm. I think it's, get, again, going to be a little bit further to the east. Nonetheless, we'll be watching it. Today, heavy rain, also a threat across parts of Arkansas, Missouri. Flood watches up for this area into Oklahoma, also into Kansas. With these thunderstorms that will be developing, big downpours possible, some really large hail. And there could even be some strong storms for cities like Baltimore, Philadelphia. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here to the strong storms that we're expecting across the plains. Tornadoes also on the table from central Oklahoma into northern Arkansas. Some damaging winds also possible with some of these stronger storms and some really big hail. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has hatched this area out. That's a significant risk of some large hail as we head into the afternoon and evening. Now, once we move into tomorrow, that threat pushes a little bit further to the east, so from central Ohio all the way down along the Gulf Coast. And then as we head into Thursday, that shifts all the way from the northeast further to the east into the panhandle of Florida. So uh, an active weather pattern setting up. Let's start across the west. This is where the storm is now. It's moving across Colorado, kicking out into the plains. It's bringing some cold air too, some snow falling today, even at the valley passes into parts of Colorado. Some of the high mountain peaks could see up to a foot of snow by the time it's all said and done later today. And then we're calming down across this region heading into tonight and into Wednesday. An upper low across the southwest, and it's impacting parts of California too with some showers. Rain chances will go up as we head into tonight, also into Wednesday and into Thursday. We'll keep this moisture around with showers, even some thunderstorms into parts of Arizona with quite a bit of tropical moisture moving back into this region. We're relatively quiet the further north you go. However, another system looks poised to move into the Pacific Northwest as we head through the weekend into the first part of next week and into parts of British Columbia. That's going to bring some wind and some snow into the higher elevations and some rain for the lower uh, elevations. Hot across the Central Valley of California today. It's also hot across the southwest, but it is cold up into the mountains of Colorado. Temperatures in the 30s barely getting above freezing in some of the mountain areas. Let's go east. This is where the severe weather is going to be as we head into the afternoon. A good slug of rain pushing east as we move through the day across Missouri. That rain could be heavy at times, also across Kansas. Everything pinwheeling around this upper low and your front dropping to the south out ahead of this front and along it. That's where we're going to see the strongest thunderstorms as we head into the afternoon. A lot of strong updrafts again with these. That will fuel the big hail makers, and it's also going to give you enough updraft and some wind shear to cause those storms to rotate. So some tornadic thunderstorms possible today into this afternoon and this evening across Oklahoma into Arkansas. I think you watch these up into Missouri too, and then back across Texas. These storms could be strong as well. Your strongest wind shear will be across Oklahoma and Arkansas. That would be your highest risk area in my mind for the biggest and strongest storms. 
heading into tonight. Those storms weaken some. That heavy rain pushes east for cities like Memphis up to Jackson, even into Nashville. They'll start to weaken though as they approach Music City. And then as we head into Wednesday, rain. Likely across this region, it's not going to be as strong in the morning hours, but everything will pulse up into the afternoon and evening, and everything is a little bit further to the east. We're starting to dry out behind our front. Temperatures also are going to be on the way down here across Texas today. It's going to be another hot one with highs in the 90s, close to 100 in some areas. Here comes your cooler weather as we head into Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. You can see numbers dropping back into the 60s and 70s. And that cool air continues to push further to the south and east as we head into Wednesday. So by Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening, much cooler across this entire region, even into Texas where we're in the 90s, at least we'll be back into the 80s. Further to the east, some strong storms possible today here into parts of the mid-Atlantic as we get into the afternoon and evening hours as this disturbance moves through from central PA, again, down to Philadelphia, Baltimore, D.C., down to Richmond, even into parts of Northern Virginia, and I think as far south as the North Carolina line. Some of these could get pretty strong heading into the evening hours once we get towards, say, 4, 5, 6 o'clock. As we head into the overnight, those weaken a bit of rain moving back into the northeast, so New York City, southern Connecticut, uh, Long Island, and then eventually that moves into Massachusetts. It doesn't move very far to the north, though. I know if you're in Maine, if you're in Vermont, you're watching the rain. You're getting, getting a little bit... Maybe enough to settle the dust as we head into this afternoon, but most of the heavier showers remaining to your south. As we head into Wednesday, though, that slug of rain moves back into Pennsylvania. Also, West Virginia, down into Virginia, again, more rain. And we're seeing some showers and storms up into Michigan, too, although the severe weather is mostly off to your south. Quite wet, though, across southern Ontario as well. And then some stronger storms possible as we head into Wednesday afternoon, also into Wednesday evening, as this front pushes off to the east. This all moves into the Northeast. Your best chance for rain into parts of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate New York. Some of this could get strong too heading into Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. A good slug of rain at first and then maybe some thunderstorms with a good soaking rain. At least it looks that way right now. Stronger storms extend all the way to the south along our front and then eventually this pushes off the coast or at least to the coast and things start to dry out some. Temperatures will be cooling off here as we head uh, into the week, although it's going to be pretty hot today. Heading into tomorrow, hot across the deep south, places like Macon, well into the 90s, over to Birmingham, down to Mobile. Cooler weather, though, on the way. Temperatures dropping back into the 40s at night across Wisconsin. It could be much colder here as we end September. High temperatures, pleasant, heading into Thursday, back up into the 60s and 70s across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. It's hot across the coastal plain of the Carolinas, down into Georgia, still in the 90s. Eventually, we'll push that hot air away as our front moves through and temperatures drop back with cloud cover and highs as we head into Saturday, get knocked back into the 80s. Here's a wide look at North America, and this is the operational European from the overnight. A couple of things I want to notice with this view. First of all, extremely stormy across the North Pacific into Alaska as it's starting to feel like winter in these areas. Big storms winding up. Fall storms are notorious here and we're going to get more over the coming days. I also want to look at the operational European for what's going to be developing right here. That's your first storm, I guess, or at least the leading one here. And then there's your second one out across the, the Atlantic. The operational European brings this thing right into the mid-Atlantic somewhere. OK, so again, it's one operational run. It's why at this point I like to look at all of the guidance, the ensemble members. They were all very close, but the operational run brings one storm right into North Carolina and Virginia. At this point, it doesn't look super strong, but that would be pretty impactful. I think you got to watch it. We're looking at Monday, guys. It's just now Tuesday, so we're still five, six days away. It's still looking really stormy across this area, though. I wanted to zoom in on Alaska and kind of talk about it a little bit because one after another area of low pressure continues to impact this region. We're building the snowpack up here, colder temperatures, more snow across the northern hemisphere compared to last year. That could mean a colder winter for North America. This isn't a winter weather outlook. I just did one yesterday. If you've not seen it, here's a link to it. Check it out. It's also in the description below. I'll see you over there and uh, catch you next time.